Hi, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we're going to be doing a sew along for another one of our patterns. This week it is the Arlo track jacket. This is a pattern that came out about a year ago, I think maybe a little over a year ago, but it is one of our unisex patterns and it has three length options. So they're done by zipper length. So there's a 22 inch, 24 inch or 26 inch and that's the center. Um, zipper and then there are three like sleeve length options so depending on if you are like a taller person or a shorter shorter person there's options for you built in without having to use like the length and shorten lines this pattern is designed for knit fabrics with at least 20 percent cross grain stretch so let me grab some fabric hang on okay so i have some fabric here um this is uh so this is like the selvage of your fabric, the yardage that goes down. So if you got a yard, you would get a yard going in this direction. This is like the finished edge. And the stretch that goes between the finished edges is your cross grain stretch. That, this fabric's really stretchy. And then this is your lengthwise stretch going this way, down the yardage. So you need to have at least 20% stretch going cross grain on your fabric. And there's a little chart in your instructions that you can use to measure. Um, generally speaking, the stretchier your fabric is for this project, the more difficult it will be. So the fabric I'm using doesn't have a lot of lengthwise stretch and that really helps me because the zipper length is fixed. So if your center front grows at all, your zipper won't fit, but don't worry. I have tips and tricks that I'll share along the way to make sure that no matter what fabric you're using, we can make it work. This pattern goes up to a 60 inch chest, uh, 63 inch hip, and I will be making a size medium in the short length um, with short length sleeves. That's, I like it kind of cropped, so it's not like a super short jacket on me, but it's like uh, kind of hits more closer to like my belt line. I have a version that I made where I made the 24 inch, and yeah, that just gives me a little bit more coverage, but um, I tend to prefer the slightly shorter length, so I'm doing the 22 inch with the 22 inch like shorter sleeves and if you like these types of videos make sure that you like this video and then also subscribe to our channel because we're going to be doing a bunch more and yeah let's get started before we get started i just want to go over some notions and tools that you might need this is a zipper foot this is an attachment for your sewing machine that you'll need to sew the zipper on we have our separating zipper and you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get the right length for the length of jacket that you're making. So this is 22 inches and it's separating, which means it separates at the bottom. You'll need that. Some sort of marking tool. This is Wonder Tape and you need this for this project to get your zipper neat. So it's basically like a two-sided tape that you use for sticking things in place. You can use this in place of like pins. Um, it's really, really helpful in this project. So you're gonna want a roll of that. This is stay tape and this is more optional. If you're working with really stretchy fabric, you're gonna want this to stabilize seams so that things don't stretch out or get wavy. My fabric is a little more uh, sturdy, so I'm not really gonna need it, but I will show you how to use it. This is the fabric I'm using. It's a two-sided fleece and it has, you're gonna need something that has 20%, at least 20% cross grain stretch. So this has that stretch, but it doesn't have lengthwise stretch, which is actually gonna make it easier to work with. It's okay if your fabric does stretch lengthwise, it'll just, it means that things can get more distorted. Uh, this is the ribbing fabric I'm gonna use and it is, yeah, just a basic rib knit and that also needs to meet the stretch requirements. I just wanna touch on a couple things on this important info page in your instructions. So this first goes, first one goes over that if you have lengthwise stretch in your fabric, especially if it's really stretchy, you're gonna wanna stay stitch the center front seams just to make sure nothing gets distorted. The seam allowance for this pattern is 3 8 of an inch and a lot of the seams are top stitched. So I am going to be top stitching this version with a zigzag stitch like I did on this previous version. And you can see that there is a fair amount of top stitching around the pockets. And if you have a really bulky fabric that you're working with, some of this can be omitted. 
we'll go over that as we sew. And then I just wanted to show you this other version I've made where I used a twin needle. And if you have that, that's also an option for your top stitching. Here's just a quick tutorial on stay stitching slash adding stay tape to that center front. It's really important because our zipper, our separating zipper length is fixed. So our pieces can't grow at all or the zipper won't fit. So this stay tape that I have, there are types that iron in. This is a sew-in one, so it just gets aligned on the wrong side of the fabric and you can just stitch it right on and that will make it so that that seam can't stretch. You could also just stay stitch right here, but if your fabric is really stretchy, that might still kind of warp it and stretch it a tiny bit. But this is, um, I'm just sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge using a straight stitch and this is gonna make that center front like really secure. It's not necessary with this fabric that I'm using, so I'm only doing this one just to show you. Once you have all your pieces cut out, before we get started sewing, you need to make sure that you have snipped in at all of your notches. So notches are just these little marks on your pattern piece that look like little triangles, and you'll just do a little snip in on the fabric wherever there's a notch, and those are reference points that match up while we're sewing. We start construction of the Arlo by making the lower pocket area and a lot of these pieces look similar so I just wanted to go over them. This is our pocket front B and that is the front of the pocket so what you can see right here. This is the pocket back D and so you see a little peak of this right here and it goes behind the pocket. This is the pocket facing C, and this piece could be cut from a thinner fabric if you're working with really bulky fabric. It's in here, you don't see it on the face of your garment, and if I were to redo this, I would have actually made this from a thinner fabric because this fabric is pretty bulky that I'm working with. And this is our lower back piece, the piece F, and you'll be able to identify this one because it's cut on the fold and it's bigger, it goes on the lower back. All right, step one, we are going to sew our pocket front to our pocket facing. So we put those with the right sides of the fabric facing each other. And we're gonna sew along this straight diagonal seam and there's a notch there that will match up. And you'll use a 3 8 inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch. So I'm using a zigzag stitch for this. And you'll just sew along that seam. After you sew it, you're gonna flip it right side out and give it a press. This fabric is not something that I can press, so I'm just kind of smushing it into place. And then you will top stitch. So you can use, I'm using a zigzag stitch for my top stitch throughout this project, and I'll just do that a quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. And there's that done, and you'll just repeat that with your other set of fronts and pocket facing. Now we're gonna join the pocket facing to the pocket back. And I'm deciding here because this fabric technically has two sides that are nice looking. And I know that we get a peak of the pocket back. So I'm deciding whether I want to do like the fuzzy all the way or do like a peak of the flat on the pocket back. So anyway, that's what's going on here. And I decided that it would be nice to have a little bit of contrast. So I am going to decide that the fleecy side instead of the more boucle looking side is the right side for the pocket back and the back gets joined to the facing along this shorter straight seam and there's a notch that um, matches up and you'll just use your 3 8 of inch seam allowance. You're gonna to wanna to finish this seam. So technically you don't have to finish the seams on knits, but if you want it to look like really tidy and professional, you're gonna to want to. And because this is like fuzzy and is letting off some fur, I am serging these edges to just get that really clean. So you'll see serged finishes in this project. Next up, we are going to anchor the front to the back along that curved edge and then down the side and across the bottom just to hold the facing in place. So we're gonna sew through all three layers and I'm just clipping in place. And then I will sew a quarter of an inch from the edge when I do this, not in the seam allowance because we don't wanna see this uh, seam later. And you'll repeat that whole process with both sets of pockets. Now we join our upper front A to our pockets. 
and we're gonna pin them right sides together. I start at this notch in the center, so you've got a matching notch on the curve of your pocket back, and anchor that there. Once that's matched up, I like to match up my center fronts. So there's a straight edge on your the front of your upper front and your pocket pieces. So I just match that up. And then you can just start to add your clips or pins uh, along the curve to just make sure everything is perfectly in place. And then you're going to take this over to your machine and use a 3 8 inch seam allowance to sew down this curved edge. After you sew that seam, you're gonna finish it and then you'll push the seam towards the body of the jacket, not towards the pockets, and you will top stitch it a quarter inch from the edge going around the curve. And if you're working with really bulky fabric, this might be one of the top stitching, the times that you omit the top stitching. Uh, it's up to you, but you'll repeat that process with both of your front sets. Now we're going to join our upper back E to our lower back F along this curve. And again, I'm kind of deciding here whether I want the contrast with the texture or to just do fuzzy straight across. And I think I'm going to go for the contrast. So we'll lay these pieces out right sides together and match the notches. So there's a notch at center back that you can match on each piece. And then there are notches along the curve that also match. So I like to just kind of anchor the points with notches and then go back and put a couple clips or pins in between. Once you have everything all set up nicely, you'll take this over to your machine and sew it using your 3 8 inch seam allowance and then you'll finish the seam. Press it up towards the body and we'll give it a top stitch. Again, you can omit the top stitching if your fabric is really bulky. And here is all of that done. Now we're gonna join our front pieces to our back piece at the shoulder seams. So lay your front pieces out on your back, right sides together, and just match up those shoulder seams. Once you have those pinned in place, you can use a 3 8 inch seam allowance same as we've been doing, sew across, finish the seams, and then these seams get pressed towards the front body and top stitched if you want to. That's an optional top stitching spot. Once you have that all done, you can lay your project out and we'll get ready to join the sleeves to the body. The sleeve gets sewn in flat, which means that we're sewing it in before we sew the side seams. And it this curve creates kind of a little bit more of an ordeal when we're pinning it in, but don't worry, it's easy. So you've got a single notch on the front of your sleeve, a single notch at the top of your sleeve, and then a double notch on the back. The single notch matches up with the front body, the double notch matches up with the back body, and then that one at the top matches up with your shoulder seam. So I like to start there by placing a pin and that kind of anchors it and then matching up the front notch, and then I'll match up the back, and then you can add in uh, your pins or clips in between to get everything pinned in nicely. Once everything's situated, you're gonna take this over to your machine and sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You'll finish the seam, and then you can top stitch it if you want, and you would do that by pressing the seam towards the body and top stitching along the body a uh, quarter inch from the seam. Once you have that done, it should look a little something like this, and you're gonna repeat it with both sleeves. And then now we will sew up the underarm and the side seam all in one go. So you'll flip your project inside out, matching up the underarm seam on the sleeve and the side seam. Okay, so we'll start pinning the seam in place and there are a couple spots that you want to match perfectly. So I like to start by anchoring it by pinning at this underarm seam, making sure those are matched up perfectly. And then you can match your sleeve underarm up. So you can start down at the hem, make sure that's matched up and then put a couple pins in between. And then moving on to the side seam, you wanna make sure that this seam matches up really well because you're gonna be able to see it on the side of your garment. So I make sure that those are matched up perfectly 
with a pin or a clip, and then you can add in your pins in between and also down to the hem. Then you'll take this over to the sewing machine and you'll use a 3 8 inch seam allowance just going all the way down and then you can finish this. You don't top stitch this seam and yeah. And don't forget to repeat that on both sides and here's what it looks like all finished up. In this next step, we are prepping the collar and you would press one of these long edges under 3 eighths of an inch. Because I don't actually wanna put any heat on this fabric at all, I don't think it would press nicely. I am going to fold the edge under and then just use a needle and thread to add a quick running stitch across. So I'm just kind of sewing this really quickly. And if you did this on yours and you could see this stitch, you could remove it after you have constructed the collar. So don't worry about it being visible. Um, on mine, you ended up not really being able to see it at all. So I just left it in on the finished garment and no one is the wiser. Anyway, so I'm just sewing this up really quick and then I'll have a nice folded under edge and I can finish assembling my collar. Now we're gonna join the collar to the body of the jacket and we'll do that by placing it right sides together. The unpressed or unsewn under edge will be joined to the body at that neckline. And you know how I like to pin things. So we start with the notch at the center and then we work our way outward. So I'm just matching up that middle part and then you can work your way out to the outsides, add clips in between or pins if that's what you're working with and yeah, get it all set up. After that, we'll take it over to the sewing machine and sew it with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And this is what she looks like sewn up. Now you're gonna grab your hem ribbing piece I, and you're gonna press it in half, wrong sides together, kind of matching that long edge how I have here. And you'll notice I have a seam at center back. That's because my ribbing was narrow, so I had to add a seam allowance to the back of that piece and then just sew two together to make a one long ribbing piece. And that is totally fine. If, that's, if you're working with a weird width of fabric, you might have to do this. Um, now we're gonna join it to the hem of the jacket. So right sides together, you'll match up the raw edge of your hem with the raw edge of your hem ribbing. And you have, if this ribbing had been one piece, there would be a notch there, but instead we've got uh, a seam. So we'll just match that notch at center back up with the seam on our hem ribbing. You'll also match it up with the ends of the hem and your ribbing is a little bit shorter than the hem opening of your jacket because it's designed to be stretched a little bit so that it pulls in. So you'll just pull um, lightly to get it to the length of the hem of your jacket. And then once you have that all pinned in place, you'll take it over to your sewing machine, use a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and then finish the seam. And if you want to top stitch this, the seam gets pressed up towards the body of the jacket and then top stitched. I will say that on the pockets, it does get pretty thick right there. So this is a good, um, if you're working with really bulky fabric, you might wanna omit the top stitching here. It's totally up to you. I did it just to see and I'm working with pretty bulky fabric and it was totally doable, but yeah, it was a little bit of a hike at parts for my sewing machine. And here's that finished. Uh, sorry for the drastic change in light. It is actually a new day um, in filming this. I ran out of light and had to uh, film the next morning. Now you're gonna lay your project out and we're going to prepare the zipper to be sewn in. So with your zipper zipped up, you're gonna lay it face down on your project. So you have a notch at the short end of your collar and that is where the zipper ends. So you wanna match that up with the end of your zipper. And then I'm placing a mark at this collar seam where the collar is joined to the body. I'm then pulling it down and matching up where this front pocket seam is and making a little mark. And then I'm making a mark where the body is joined to the ribbing. That's because these 
this is a separating zipper, so it's got two different sides, but we want to make sure that it's perfectly matched up with these points along the front because other if it's off even a little bit, you'll be able to tell once your garment is sewn up. So I have those marks on one side of my zipper and then I'm just transferring them over to the other side of my zipper so that when these two sides are separated, I will have that reference. Once you have your zipper all marked up, you're going to go ahead and separate it and we'll work with one half at a time. You can add your wonder tape to the right side of your zipper along the tape and then we will join that to the body of the jacket. Right sides together, you are going to lay your zipper right side down along the center front of your jacket and you have your markings that you'll be able to see because the wrong side is still facing up towards you. So go ahead and remove the backing on the wonder tape to expose the stickiness and then you can carefully lay it down on your project matching up those marks with the corresponding spots that they go with. So, you know, making sure that the hem ribbing is matched up with that mark and then that seam for our pockets matches up perfectly with our mark, working your way up and then this collar seam will also match up and then the end of your zipper matches with the notch on your collar. Zippers generally have a little bit of extra tape above where the zipper ends, and that is going to get folded down when we sew this. So you're gonna sew along your zipper 3 8 of an inch from the edge, just going all the way down, being sure to backstitch at the beginning and end of the stitch, and you're gonna repeat it on both sides. Oh, and I almost forgot to say that you need to make sure when you sew this that the seam where your body joins to your collar, that seam is pushed up towards the collar when you sew. I'm just giving you a quick peek at the process of sewing the zipper because I just want to emphasize that you want to make sure those marks stay aligned. When you're working with stretchy fabric, it can like shift and move and you really don't want these marks to um, shift because then the front of your jacket whenever it's zipped up, you're going to see it and it's going to drive you crazy. Uh, but if you just keep your eye on those marks and make sure that they are exact, then there will be no problem. And here's a quick overview of just taping and sewing the other side, just to show you that when you're sewing the half that has the zipper head on it, you can't really sew like near that because it's too bulky. So you can stop and lift up your presser foot and then slide the zipper up into the area that's already been sewn or in this case I'm actually like taking it off the machine to show you so that I've stopped and then I'm just going to move the zipper head way out of the way so that its bulk is not interrupting my ability to sew and then just restart your seam and continue down to the bottom. Now we're going to continue working on the collar so you're going to want to unzip your project and then you'll fold the collar back over your zipper at that notch that's on the short end of your collar and that will match the folded under edge with the collar seam that you have and you're just going to stitch those. The zipper is like sandwiched in between the two layers of collar in this step. So you'll sew um, just down the collar back stitching at the beginning and the end. And just make sure when you do this that the folded edge of your collar stays pressed under and that also the collar seam is still being sewn like it's pushed upwards towards the collar. You're going to repeat that on both sides and then you can flip it right side out and you can see how that top part of your zipper is now enclosed and we're just going to finish this collar. So you will push the folded edge so that it matches up with the seam on your collar and then that seam allowance is pressed up into the collar. So you'll just um, pin this in place on the right side because you're going to stitch in this ditch around the collar to create a really nice finish going around the neckline. And it's a kind of slow process but I do this by just kind of getting making sure that that folded edge is in place and then flipping my project over to the right side and then placing a pin right in that seam so that I know that when I sew it, that it's being held over that seam line. 
And now you're gonna stitch just right along the seam or right below it if you're using your zigzag stitch. And then um, that'll just make sure that you're catching that folded edge on the underside, but you are sewing from the right side of your project. And then here is what that looks like all finished up. We have one more step to sew with the zipper. We need to top stitch it down, but if you are working with bulky fabric at all, or honestly with any fabric, you're gonna to wanna to trim down this fabric under the zipper. So just carefully snipping up along the seam allowance and making sure not to snip into your zipper tape at all, but just removing whatever bulk you can from this area is gonna make your sewing your zipper easier and tidier. Now you are going to push your zipper teeth outward and you'll use Wonder Tape on this underside of your zipper to pin it in place. This is especially crucial if you are using fabric that shifts around or is stretchy at all because on this seam, when you're top stitching it, it can shift. So here I have that done. I've just, I taped it down underneath and then I uh, sewed along, just top stitching along this center front seam. Okay, y'all, hard part's over. We're almost done. Get excited about this jacket. So we just need to do the cuffs. You're gonna fold them in half right sides together and then you'll just sew down the side seam using your 3 8 inch seam allowance. And the reason I kept my pattern piece with me was to make sure, because they're kind of rectangular, you wouldn't wanna accidentally sew it the wrong way, like accidentally join these like longer edges just to be safe. Once you have it sewn, you will fold it in half, um, long sides meeting each other, and you can kind of tuck the seam so that it's all going in one direction and lays flat. And then you will grab your project and we will sew this to the sleeve hems. You'll wanna grab your sleeve and slip your cuff onto your sleeve right sides together so that the raw edge of the hem on your jacket and the hem on your ribbing are matched up. You can match the underarm seam up with the seam on your cuff. And then just like your hem ribbing, your cuff is a little bit smaller than the hem opening of your sleeve. So we'll have to stretch it a little bit as we sew. So what I like to do is just match those underarm seams and then I just stretch it out and add a few pins or clips in so that everything is kind of distributed evenly. Most machines have a kind of throat thing that you can remove here to have a smaller um, opening on this throat and you could actually pull the sleeve over it, but mine doesn't. So I'm gonna show you how if your machine doesn't do that, you just kind of have to work this under the sleeve or under the presser foot. So I'm kind of laying it flat and then very carefully moving it around so that I'm not like catching any other stuff. The one time that the sewing machine is actually like not very helpful, but you can make it work. It's just a little bit of extra struggle. Once you've sewn all the way around the sleeve hem, you will repeat on the other side and then finish your seams and then we are done. Ta-da! Here is the finished Arlo, and I just really love how it turned out. It's super warm, super cozy, and I'm literally wearing it as I record this voiceover, and it's definitely a essential winter layer for me. Put it under a big warm jacket, wear it on its own. It's just wonderful. Kind of Patagonia vibes, but um, much cheaper to make. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye.